Hello, in this video, I'm gonna be going through lesson 8.2 on properties of parallelograms. The essential question is what are the relationships between the sides, angles, and diagonals of a parallelogram? Let's start by defining a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Remember that parallel lines are marked with arrows. So you can see in this diagram here that side AB is parallel to side CD because they're marked with the one arrow each. And then the second pair of parallel sides is marked with two arrows so that side BC is parallel to side AD. It's important to remember that you should not assume something unless it's marked. So if you see a figure and it looks like a parallelogram, do not assume the figure is a parallelogram unless the sides are marked parallel or you are told that it's a parallelogram. Parallelograms have some special properties. And the first property of a parallelogram is that opposite sides are congruent. You should mark those opposite sides congruent on your diagram in your notes. So with opposite sides being congruent, that means that PQ and RS are congruent and QR and PS are also congruent. Opposite sides are across from each other in the parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent in all parallelograms. Let's practice that property now where we can solve for X. In example one, we're given some parallelograms and we're asked to solve for X using properties of parallelograms. Notice that the two sides that are marked here, side FG and side EH, are opposite sides. And we know that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent. So we can just set those two expressions equal to one another. I'm gonna put the one with the X in it first. So I'm gonna put 2x plus three, and I'm gonna set that equal to 23. And now we just do the algebra and solve for x. Subtract three on each side to get the 2x alone. 23 minus three is 20. And then just divide everything by two, and we get x equals 10. In my second parallelogram, I have side WV is 2X minus two, and side XU is X plus 10. Notice again that those are opposite sides, and we know by parallelogram property number one, opposite sides are congruent. So 2X minus two equals X plus 10. Here we do have a variable on both sides, so our first job should be to get all the X's to one side. The easiest way to do that is to subtract x from each side. That'll keep our variables positive. 2x minus x is just 1x, or simply x. So this side is now x minus 2. And over here, we subtracted the x, so now we're just left with the 10. Well, if x minus 2 equals 10, we're one step away. Just add 2 to each side. And just like that, we get x equal 12. So that would be our final answer for problem B here. Parallelogram property number two says that opposite angles are congruent. Opposite angles are angles that are across from one another. So angle P and angle R are opposite angles. So they are congruent to each other and angle Q and angle S are also opposite angles, so they're congruent to each other as well. In a diagram, when angles are congruent, we mark them with the arc markings like this. So P and R, I each gave the one arc or one curved line, and then Q and S, those are different from P and R most of the time, unless everything's in 90 degrees. Okay, so Q and S here, I marked with the two curved lines. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent in any parallelogram. Let's practice this property. We're going to apply properties of parallelograms to solve for x in each of the parallelograms below. 
Notice that in problem A, we have angle V equals 14X plus 9, and angle X equals 15X. See how those are opposite angles? Well, opposite angles have to be congruent to one another. So that means the 14X plus 9 should be equal to 15X. And now to solve for X, we should move all the X's to one side. So I'm going to subtract 14X on each side. That gets us down to 9 equals 1X or just X. So here X equal 9. In our second parallelogram, we have angle F and angle H, which are also opposite. So we know they're equal to each other. So 8x plus 9 has to be equal to 10x minus 5. And now it's just an algebra problem. Move all the x's to one side. The easiest way to do that is to subtract 8x. That'll keep our variable positive. So now the left side's just a 9. The 10x minus 8x is 2x. So 9 equals 2x minus 5. Then we can get rid of that minus 5 by adding 5 to each side. That's 14 equals 2x. And then we're one step away here, just divide by 2. And we get x equals 14 divided by 2, which is 7. Parallelogram property 3 tells us that the diagonals bisect each other. Remember the word bisect means that they're divided into two equal parts. So if the diagonals are bisecting each other, you can see in my diagram here, I have diagonal QS and diagonal PR. They're intersecting at point M. If the diagonals are bisecting each other, that means they're dividing each other into two congruent halves. Now they aren't all the same, just QS, diagonal number one, is divided into two equal parts so that QM is congruent to MS, and then the other diagonal, PR, is also divided into two equal parts so that PM is congruent to MR. So they're not all four the same, but we get two halves that are the same. Each diagonal is cut in half by that intersection of the other diagonal. Let's practice property number three. For example three, we want to apply properties of parallelograms to solve for x in each of the parallelograms below. Notice how BD is a diagonal and see how the other diagonal AC is intersecting it at point Z? Well, we know by parallelogram property three that the diagonals bisect each other so that dz, the x plus 19, has to be the same as bz, 3x plus 5. So let's just set those equal to one another. x plus 19 equals 3x plus 5. Then, since we have a variable on both sides, we want to move all the x's to one side. I'm going to subtract x on both sides to get us down to 19 equals 2x plus 5. Now that we have all the x's to one side, we need to move all the numbers to the other. So let's undo that plus 5 by subtracting 5. And that's 14 equals 2x. And now we're one step away. Just divide each side by 2 to get the x alone. And that'll get us down to x equals 7. Problem B is pretty similar. You can see that the two diagonals are intersecting at point Z and one half is 2x minus 39. The other half is x minus 10. We know the diagonals bisect each other, so those two halves must be congruent. 2x minus 39 must be equal to x minus 10. And now we can use properties of algebra to solve. Let's move all the x's to one side by subtracting x. That gets us down to x minus 39 equals negative 10. And then if we add 39 on each side, that will get us down to x equals 29. So x equals 29 is the final answer. 
By the way, if you want to check your answers, you can always take your x value and plug it back into the equation. So I could take 2 times 29 minus 39 and evaluate that on my calculator. 2 times 29 would be 58, and 58 minus 39 would be 19. Okay, then I can put the 29 into this expression as well. 29 minus 10 is also 19. So both halves of the diagonals are going to be 19 if we plug the x back in. So that's just a way to check your answer. If they didn't match up and you had two different numbers, that would tell you that you solved for x incorrectly. Parallelogram property number four tells us that consecutive angles are supplementary. That means they add to 180 degrees. So for our picture, let's actually put an example in there. Suppose that angle P is 70 degrees. We know that opposite angles are congruent. That's parallelogram property too. So we know that angle R must also be 70 degrees. But then as far as the consecutive ones go, consecutive angles have to be supplementary. They have to add to 180. So to get angle Q, that's just 180 minus 70, which makes that 110 degrees. And then angle S would be the same. So see how all the angles next to each other in my picture, the 70 here, P and Q add to 180. The Q and the R are consecutive. Those add to 180 as well. The R and the S add to 180, and the P and the S also add to 180. For example four, let's apply that property of parallelograms to solve for X in each of the parallelograms below. Notice that angle C is 72 degrees and angle D is 11x plus 9. Those are consecutive angles, and we know that consecutive angles are supplementary, which means if we add them together, they have to total up to 180. So do not set them equal to each other. You only do that for angles when they're opposite angles. If they're consecutive angles, they have to total 180. So here we'd have the 11x plus 9, I'm going to put the one with the x in it first, plus the 72 equals 180. And now if we combine our like terms, 9 and 72 is 81. So 11x plus 81 equals 180. Now let's subtract 81 on each side to get the 11x alone. And when we do that, we end up with 11x equals 99. And then a quick divide by 11 gives us our answer of x equal 9. Problem B is pretty similar. See how angle W is 12x plus 5 and angle V is 115? We know that together those two consecutive angles have to add to 180 degrees. So that's 12x plus 5 plus 115 equals 180. Now let's combine our like terms here. The 5 and the 115 adds to 120. So we have 12x plus 120 equals 180. Then we should get rid of that plus 120 by subtracting 120 on each side. And that gets us down to 12x equals 60. And now we are one step away from our answer. Just divide by 12 here. And 60 divided by 12 is 5. So x equals 5. If you wanted to double check your answer too, you could always go right here and say, okay, well that's 12 times 5 plus 5, so that's 60 plus 5, which is 65. And if that angle there is 65 degrees, we can verify that 65 plus 115 is indeed 180. So plugging x back in is always an option to check your answer if you'd like. Not required, but it's something that is recommended. You can even do the check right in your calculator. The try now at the end of the lesson combines some of the properties together. You're going to solve for the indicated variables in each of the parallelograms below. Please try these problems on your own. 
Pause the video now and give the try now a try. Please pause your video. Okay, here are your solutions for the first variable here, 2x is opposite with the 50 degree angle. And we know by parallelogram property two that opposite angles are congruent. So 2x equals 50, quick divide by two gives us x equals 25. You can also see that side JK of 18 and side ML of Y plus three are opposite sides. And by parallelogram property number one, we know that opposite sides are congruent. So just do 18 equals Y plus three and you end up with Y equal 15. On number two, we're given angle R equals three X plus 17 and angle S equals 130. Those are consecutive angles. And by parallelogram property four, we know that consecutive angles are supplementary. So add the 3x plus 17 with the 130, set that equal to 180, and when you do your algebra, you'll end up with x equal 11. The last picture has the diagonals of the parallelogram marked. The 3s is equal to the 27 because the diagonals bisect each other so that the two halves of the diagonals are equal. 3s equals 27 ends up with an answer of s equal 9, and the other diagonals also bisected, so the t plus 5 equals 19, and we end up with t equal 14. This concludes lesson 8.2. Thanks for watching, and good luck as you try problems on your own. Bye!